if z is a function f of x, y, then the differential dz is fx dx plus fy dy, as we've seen on a number of occasions now. Now, if x, in turn, is a function of two other variables, say u and v, so x is a function of two variables, u and v, then a change in u is going to give us a change in x, which is going to feed in to our expression, our differential, and cause a change in the value of z. So that change in u implies a change in x, implies a change in f. Okay, this could be written df or dz. Change in the value of f, according to this expression. A change in v implies an independent change in x. That is, a change in x that's independent of whatever happened as a result of u. And that implies an independent change in the value of f. These changes are independent in the same sense that when we looked at a function f of x, y, the change in y depended only on the y derivative and was independent of the change in x, which depended only on the x derivative, or the, the, the change due to a change in y depended only on the y derivative. The change due to a change in x depended only on the x derivative. So uh, they were independent, and this change in u and change in v have independent effects, ultimately on, first on x and ultimately on f. Now, the change in x due to a change delta u, the change in the value of u is just delta x, is approximately equal to the u derivative of x. x sub u just means the u derivative of x multiplied by delta u. And that expression is fairly obvious. This is simply the rate of change of x with respect to u, and this is the change in u when we multiply that rate of change by the change. we the rate of change with respect to u by change in u, we get the change in x. And we can get an independent change in x due to change in v. So that would be this expression with just the analogous interpretation. Rate of change of x with respect to v times delta v gives us a change in x, which gives us a total change in x, which is x sub u. That u might be a little hard to read, but it's x sub u delta u plus x sub v delta v. Now, if we combine these two independent changes in x, and again, I've used the same symbol for the changes, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of apologizing for that, but I can't think of a good way to notate that, to make these different. Any notation I can think of a subscript one or two is going to be misleading. Uh, and I'm sure it's just my shortcoming in not being able to think of a good way, a clear way to delineate these two. But let's just accept that we have a change in x due to the change in u, another change in x due to the change in v, and that gives us a total change in x of x u delta u plus x v delta v, which leads to a change in f x delta x that's just f x times that expression. And very similar reasoning with our y's tells us that we have an fy delta y that's going to be equal to fy times y sub u delta u plus y sub v delta v. Again, rate of change of y with respect to u times delta u plus the rate of change of y with respect to v times delta v gives us the change uh, in, in the y. And multiplying that change in y by the rate of change of f with respect to y, of course, gives us a change in f.